Okay, so let's go ahead and talk a little bit about array initialization. So we have seen how we can fill an array with values. However, this can be a, I mean, this can be a tiresome when we have an array of 100 or more elements and we have to set each one of them to some value. Luckily for us, there is a way of assigning values to elements when declaring an array and that is basically initialization of an array. So, uh, the initializing one element at a time in this fashion, this would be like, yeah, possible, doable, but no, not really. Okay, so let me just delete my pretty drawing here. Off it goes, no more. And if we, for example, had these two, or well, I don't know, I can even delete this one because it's really not important for the time being. And I can just have this array here. So I can define its size. Let's reduce its size. Let's say that it's five. And then I can go ahead and initialize it in a line here. I can state, I don't know, one, two, seven, five, one. So that would be that would be me initializing the array. So the array ARR1 has been initialized with uh, with with these numbers basically. So you have one, two, seven, five, one. So uh, ARR at well, let me just show it like like this. Uh, so let's just write some pseudocode. So if I place the zero here, and if I typed in std colon colon c out. Okay, so this will this will definitely print out the very first element, uh, which is one. So there you go. It says one. If I uh, close, yes. Okay. So if I change this to one. And if I go ahead and run this, yep, it's going to print out two. If I change it to three, it shall print out seven and so on and so forth. You get the idea. Oops, five, is it five? Oh yeah, oh yeah, sorry. So zero, one, two, three. Yep, there we go. So it is five after all. My bad there. Okay, help me out here, Windows. Yep, there we go. So the number of initialized elements must be less than or equal to the array size. So if the array size is five, we cannot have six elements here. That's not the way, that's not the way it works. Uh, it will not compile if we have one extra number here. So let's say four. Let's go ahead and try to do this. Ah, nope, it, too many initializers for this array. This is not gonna happen but we can initialize less than the array size of elements. So that is possible and very much doable. Okay, so, oops, sorry. Yep, there you go. So it does run again without any problems of whatsoever. Anyway, uh, all the other pretty much in this particular, in this particular example, when we have initialized uh, less, less elements, for example, it can be like one, two, three, or even less than that, we could have initialized one. So the element zero will have the value of one. Element one will have the value of two, while this one will, while the element, so zero, one, and two, element two will have, sorry, element two will have the value of seven, and element one will have the value of one, and element zero will have the value of one, but this is like zero, one, two, three, and four, but what's in the fifth place? What sort of a value is in the fifth place? The one that we have not initialized at all. Well, other, well, you know, in our example, where it's basically int ARR1, and that is the default value for that type. So for this particular type, like int, is zero. So all other elements have the value of zero. Here, let me just prove that to you. So zero, one, two, uh, three, and four, okay? So let's just go ahead and run this. 
Yep, there we go. It prints out zero, even though we haven't actually written zero as the last element here. Okay, so uh, this would be equivalent to me writing comma zero. So same thing, if I didn't place the zero or if I placed it, it doesn't really matter at all. You can leave elements uninitialized completely and under the assumption that it's an int, it will be a zero. For something else, it might be something else. But for the time being, we're just uh, basically focusing on uh, this. Anyway, this is this is basically one of the easiest ways that we can initialize a, an array that is like rather large. We can say that there it has 100 elements. So if we just basically do this and type a zero here, all the elements will be null. All the elements will be zero will have the initialized value of zero. But how would we initialize the array to a number five? Well, or to something else, it doesn't matter. I'm just taking number five as an example here. Well, for that, we would use a loop. And loop has the ability to initialize an array in a very fast manner without being too much of a bother, so to say. Let's go ahead and do this, int i equals zero. So we're just gonna go ahead and use the knowledge that we have gained in the previous tutorials. And it's going to be 100 here. It's gonna be plus plus i. So arr4, i, now this shall equal to five. So, i will be the control variable which will accept values from 0 to 99 so, because it says i less than 100 and it begins from 0. So this will iterate. For every different iteration of the loop, i will increase by 1. First it will be 0, and then it will be 1, then it will be 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, etc. And all the elements will be initialized to number 5 in no time. Just the... Uh, Okay, I made a made a bit of an error. So ARR4. ARR4 is in my notes because I've just listed them like that. But there you go. It does indeed uh, do it. So we are print we're still printing out the fourth element. And if you notice up above, you will notice that we did not initialize the first element to number five. Rather, instead we initialized all the elements to zero. But the for loop actually initialized all the elements to number five. So not a not a not nothing nothing uh, too complex there. So I've already shown you how you can, this is basically how you would print out an array. You would just uh, use the element number and that's it. But hey, you know what? You can you can do this. Uh, totally legit. So, okay. Uh, no, that's not what I wanted. Okay. Oh, come on. So, if I place i here, and I shall also place like, maybe not end l because I do not wish to go into the new line. I kind of do because there are like 100 elements. Yep, so let's go ahead and use end l. So std colon colon, end l. I was thinking of putting them all in the same line, but no way too many elements for that. So let's go ahead and build and run this. And there you go. All of them are going to be number five from first to last, which is uh, kind of weird. But you can play you can play around with this. I mean, there are uh, arrays are used for various sort of things. You can say that, look at this, I shall be equal to I. So index value will change in accordance with i and it will be initialized to the same value so you can can even do that i mean yep there you go so it's it goes from like 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 all the way to 99 it just spins them around from the first to the last one and it's initialized in a rather easy fashion so to say now, you can also request input for the array in the same way you can request an input for an integer or something like that. So it would be std colon colon c in at standard input form arr, I don't know, one, and 
then you would specify which index, which element would you like to be initialized. So I don't know, element three. We would like a element three to be initialized or something like that. So it's pretty much the same, except you're using this format and specifying the element indexes. So an index can also be any sort of an expression, but the result of the expression must be within the array scope. So it must be within the size of the array. So I don't know, you can basically state that you have some sort of a variable here, num, as a number that is equal to five. And then here you can type in num plus uh, three times num minus five. Okay, so uh, this is gonna happen first. So it's gonna be 15 plus five and minus five in essence. That's it, no big deal. It's gonna be 15, or I'm assuming it's gonna be 15. <laughs> if I'm wrong, please feel free to correct me. But anyway, uh, this will be, if this evaluates to something that is within the scope of the array, this is a perfectly legit statement. So this can be an expression and this expression can be pretty much infinitely complex. So what is very important for you to keep in mind is when an array is being declared, the size must, and it must be declared and it must be constant because the array is static and the size must be known when compiling. You cannot, uh, this, is, this is one of the typical mistakes that people who are learning make. They, for example, they try to, they try to, well, let me just uh, go ahead and comment this line out so it doesn't get taken into consideration. Yeah, our, our six, uh, sorry, just gonna use one here. And if I say, and if I give it a numeric constant as a declaration of its size, that's fine. But if I do something like this, which is definitely incorrect, and this is something that you cannot do, uh, I cannot, for example, say int num, not initialize num, type in down below std colon colon c out, enter the number of elements and then just type in num here. So this is not gonna work, even though it is intuitive that it happens in this fashion, to an extent I would say, this is wrong, wrong and wrong, absolutely wrong. You cannot create an array with an int that has been uninitialized, which is entered on runtime. Size is not known during compile time, and if size is not known during compile time, this will not work. Here, just go ahead and run it. Ah, nope, not gonna happen. It doesn't, 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 uh, doesn't work that way. It gives me a red, oops, but I did make a mistake here. Yep, again, so it's not gonna, it's not gonna, it's not really going to work but it's, ah, oh, come on, my good man, num1, whatever. And there you go. It's gonna give me an error on line 22, and it's not gonna be able to actually run the program itself. It's not going to work at all. Now, what you can do, and this is something that is not allowed in C, as we have said already, num is not a real constant. However, in C++, it is allowed because num is a real constant. Let's, uh, let's just put it like that. And here's, actually, I know it sounds a little bit weird when I say it like this, but let me just show it to you in an example and you will figure it out very fast. So, if I put in front of int const, and if I say initialize this const to something, so num, and if I say, I don't know, 50, whatever. This is a constant variable. And then I'm of course going to delete this because the value of this constant variable will not change. 
I will go ahead and type in num here. So let's go ahead and run this and see what happens. Will this work? Ah, it won't. Error, conflicting declaration in ARR1. I wonder why. It should work, but apparently it doesn't. Oh well, no big deal. It's not the uh, not the not one of the ways you should actually do it. Just uh, initialize it with a number, so with a constant variable. As I said, this is not allowed in C, as we have, as I mean, num is not a real constant. However, in C plus plus, it is, and we are working in C plus plus. I really don't know why it won't actually work. Let's just rename this to test and this is going to be test as well so this is int and this is a constant int and one is fifth okay so let's go ahead and run it here error conflicting declaration ah 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 okay 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 i see what the problem is it's a yep let's go ahead and there, there was a very good reason why in my notes I've actually placed them like R A R R one A R R two three four five six seven and so on and so forth. And if I run it, yep, there we go. It's gonna work. But if I uh, remove this, and if I remove this, oh, array has stopped working. Windows is checking for the solution. Close the program. Okay, so I would say it partially worked, but not the way we wanted it to. Uh, there, was, uh, there was definitely a problem. So this is not the way you will go about things. Just wanted to mention that. Uh, there is also another way of doing this. You can basically uh, just do this. Define size, let's say 20. size roll it there we go so this works flawlessly without any problems this is a correct way of this is also one of the correct ways of putting it because the compiler will correct this into arr 20 ar220 before actual compiling so in conclusion the variable length array the size of it that is an array with a variable as a size is not allowed. So you cannot put some like variable int or even worse float as size. That is not allowed. You, you must use a constant. If we have an array of unknown size, then that is the case. Then in that case, we will use dynamic memory allocation. Uh, for example, you will have we will use this with ve with vectors. And this is a subject for another time, something that I shall deal with down along the road. But for the time being, I just want to show you what arrays were in, uh, what are some basic ground rules in regard to arrays. Anyway, bid you farewell and hope to see you in the follow-up tutorial.